No. Uh, right. Mm. Are you doing any warmed up for your first act? Yeah. yeah. Would you please welcome to the stage the first ever museum show, Sabatra Das? applause while we just get ourselves sorted out here that would be very much appreciated thank you i really wasn't expecting that so thank you very much for participating it's good to see that you're here um hello my name is sabadra and i work for ucl museums and i have just recently for the last barely even a month i am the newly appointed curator of ucl pathology collections uh, uh, so enjoy the rest of your evening. Goodbye. Uh, no. <laughs> okay, so I'm here tonight specifically to show off about this one collection, UCL Pathology Collections, and I'm standing in the way of it. So if I stand generally here, can everyone still see me? Can everyone see the pretty pictures of all the gruesome things that I have chosen? This is just generally a little um, a slideshow that's going to carry on. Uh, what I need to tell you about this is that because I've only just started this job, I'm still kind of finding my way. So I'm finding my way in and among the collections, so by doing that I can tell you that at the pathology collections we have, does everyone know what pathology is, by the way? It's like dead, dead stuff and horrible things that happen to people in jars. <laughs> the, 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 the jars happen after the horrible things happen. <laughs> uh, um, which, is, which is the way we want to keep it. Uh, so we, we, put, we put the things in the jars, students study from them, we also have things like plaster casts, we have plastic models, we have all those sort of interesting things that document the, the gruesomeness that happens to our bodies. Um, and that's what the purpose of the collections are. Um, I also, um, in the process of finding out more about the collections, I'm finding out more about myself as this process continues, because um, the one thing I would like to particularly share with you, um, I need to point out, by the way, it's a pathology collection, it's a medical collection, but despite all appearances, I'm not a medic. Uh, <laughs> I have defied the will of several generations of Asian parents. <laughs> ended up managing a medical collection. Uh, I trained as an archaeologist, I now work in museums, this is now what I do. Um, and the one thing I've learned about myself from having been surrounded by these various jars with bits of people in them, uh, oh my mum's going to be so proud, uh, I see penises everywhere. <laughs> uh, this has become particularly embarrassing because on account of not being a medic, we have all these samples and sometimes we have to organise them and we usually organise them in terms of systems, right? So we do cardiovascular, we do respiratory, put all the lungs together, put all the hearts. Uh, and if you've got a urology collection, you put all the penises together. Um, which is embarrassing mainly because if you start to look at stuff, you start to see shapes, you know, like human, the, the human beings. <laughs> well, apparently we're programmed to see faces everywhere. It turns out I'm programmed to see penises. Um, <laughs> this is particularly embarrassing. Um, when we, we, found all these, we found all these specimens and I was just like, oh gosh, there's, there's another one and another one. Oh, look, there's hundreds of them. Um, and what they turned out to be were tongues. <laughs> and what they were, so it's the tongue and all the, the bit of the throat had all been cut out and kind of just, if you see one of them, you will understand my natural mistake. Uh, but this this is this is the kind of this is the kind of stuff that I'm doing for fun like right that. Um, but the what, what else do I say? Oh, total penis is that what I was saying? So yeah. So if I'm generally happy surrounded by penises, um, if you have to forgive me, this is the first time I'm using props, so this all becomes very interesting. Talking of total penises, <laughs> um, <laughs> what I discovered just before I started working properly with this collection was something very surprising. Now museum people get very excited when people who aren't museum people talk about their stuff. Um, mainly because of the whole not being able to do the whole eye contact talking to people thing. Uh, and so this is why I was particularly about the UCL pathology collections are in this book. Has anyone, does anyone know Russell Brand? Yeah. No, not but I met personally. So I'm about to say horrible things about him. Has anyone slept with him? Numerically, <laughs> numerically that is actually more likely. <laughs> This is, a, this is a remarkable book. It's not my usual reading material. It was a Christmas present from my uncle-in-law. Uh, and it was up on the bookshelf for ages. And I was really stressed out about the whole job application process. I'm like, I need something just to relax, to take my mind off the process. And what do I find but the pathology collections in this very book? So this is what I would like to show off with you this evening. And I didn't practice this, so I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to do it with one hand. Bear with me, come on. Uh, Russell Brand, this is quite topical because he's just been going and talking to the government about how drugs are bad and that, yeah? <laughs> um, so the whole point of this, the book up until this point, basically, this is this little bit here, this little bit here is about childhood. 
Um, everything else is sex and drugs. Okay, just almost entirely. Not necessarily in that order, sometimes at the same time. Um, in this particular section, the chapter is entitled, Is This a Cash Card I See Before Me? Um, he's remarkably witty. Actually, I do kind of like this guy, even though I probably wouldn't have him in my house. Um, he's talking about a time, he's, he's, he's young, he's at university, well, not he's at this place called the Drama Centre, learning how to do drama, I'm assuming. Um, and uh, he's dating this girl, who is a junior doctor at the Royal Free Hospital, which is where all this stuff is. Okay. So I read Royal Free Hospital, and I'm thinking, ooh, I know where that is, that's cool, I've been there. Um, and then he writes this, he says, One day, when I was up at the hospital, Kerry showed me a room with shelves all stacked up with these formaldehyde-filled jars containing hands, fingers, genitals, and malformed fetuses. Sorry, a bit of a conversation killer, isn't it? Uh, now, I'm sorry I'm reading this, thinking, I'm, oh my god, it's the collection, I'm so excited, someone cares! And he's famous, and he could come, and we could have an event, and he could like, cut a ribbon or something, you know. This, this is, this, we're going to launch UCL pathology collections that will be even more famous than the Science Museum, and we're not even in South Kensington. Uh, I'm getting very excited. Now, at this point, I need to explain something to you about music. Give me a shout if you work in a museum, we're going to do that box pop thing again. Yay. So if I say documentation to you. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so what, what, for those of you who don't work in museums, we like lists. Okay? We like things to be complete. We like to have track of exactly what we're doing. All of our objects have to have pretty numbers on them and we, with those numbers we have to know all the information that's ever associated with that one object. And we like these registers, they're called accession registers, to be complete. If they become incomplete, we start to get twitchy. Uh, this is this is partially genetic. It's mostly training, um, and the reason why I mean I don't think it's good training. I believe that museums are for people and for doing fun stuff, uh, like being up here and talking about the stuff that we care about. Um, and it it does piss me off when people think that what we really should be doing is being in a dark room and making lists. Um, but my natural tendencies lie that way, and so this is my internal monologue as I am reading this. Okay. So he says it was brilliant. It's like, okay, fine. Opening event. Hooray. Uh, he then goes and says, I told Mark Morrissey, who is his partner in drugs, is, is, the, is the easy way to, to describe this here, about it. He reflected and then said, let's steal a fetus, <laughs> leave it in the park, then phone the sun and tell them we found an alien. Mm. <laughs> said, honestly, these people, he's never going to go for it, isn't that ridiculous? Good idea, Mark, I said. <laughs> we should definitely do that. Now, as I said, I've gone through half this book already. This guy at this stage, all right, he couldn't actually lose his virginity by himself. He had to get his dad to take him to Hong Kong, find some prostitutes, and both in the same room at the same time. This is this is it's a fascinating book. You really should look into it. Um, later on, he describes a charming incident when he spits in the face of a prostitute, uh, which is which is hilarious actually. Um, have I lost you there? It's okay. The prostitutes, are prostitutes are people too. Come on. Um, okay, so at this point I'm like, there's no way this is ever going to happen. My, my accession register is safe, my collection is still sound, there's nothing happening here. Uh, he then says, we took some drugs to relax us. I'm like, yeah, right, no way, nothing happening here. And waited for nightfall before embarking on our flawless plan. Nah, still never going to happen. His next line is, it's quite easy to get into a hospital. Just sidle in through the casualty department and then use elevators in your imagination to get right into its core. <laughs> Wisely, we'd taken a couple of Kerry's white doctor coats and blue scrubs so we looked exactly like normal doctors and not like scarecrows on their way to surgery on drugs. <laughs> My voice is shaking right now. Already I'm scared. <laughs> I am really worried. There is a room full of fetuses. I haven't counted them yet. I don't know if one of them is missing. It was much harder to find those fetuses than we had envisaged because the Royal Free is quite big. I will testify to this, it is quite big. Fetuses are small and it's hard to concentrate when you're on acid. <laughs> I do appreciate the laugh though, but that was for him, so you're going to have to work harder for me. It was, it was fun walking endlessly round and round the hospital till four o'clock in the morning, past wards full of ill people, sometimes stopping to practice our bedside manner or do one of them red zigzag mountain drawings at the end of someone's bed. God, this is awful, I haven't actually this before. <laughs> We couldn't find those bloody babies, uh, though, so we contented ourselves with some boxes of rubber gloves, sample jars, and syringes. Uh, our shift at an end, we trickled off back into the world like a couple of woozy doogie houses. So that, if any of you were wondering, I don't know if you saw the title of this, but that is the reason why Russell Brown should never be let near any museum collection ever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention.
Oh, I don't know what's going on. I want to keep.